Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Grade 11 This is a video lesson recording for statistics and probability Module 2 Normal Distribution The most essential learning competencies for this lesson are Illustrate a normal random variable and its characteristics Identify regions under the normal curve Corresponding to different standard normal values Convert a normal random variable to a standard normal variable and vice versa and compute probabilities and percentiles using the standard normal table. This module is actually subdivided into five different lessons. For today, we are only going to discuss lesson one and lesson two, which is understanding the normal curve distribution and identifying the regions of areas under the normal curve. So I hope you have your modules with you. Lesson 1, Understanding the Normal Curve Distribution. So last time, we were talking about the concept of random variables. And we even solved for the mean and variance of discrete probability distribution. However, it's not always the case because some data are continuous. The distribution of this type is known as the normal probability distribution or the normal curve. So we are going to tackle the properties, concepts, and other processes involving the normal distribution. You may answer the background check for yourself, but let's do this challenge part. Given the following score distributions of the students in a mathematics quiz, sketch the graph of the frequency polygon of each distribution. Then answer the following questions. So let's try to graph the given. So first, we have the scores here in our x-axis, and we have the frequency on the y-axis. So if we have a score of 1, the frequency is also 1. And then if we have a score of 2, the frequency is 3. And then we have score of 3 has a frequency of 4 and then score of 4 has a frequency of 5 5 has a frequency of 9 6 has a frequency of 5 7 has a frequency of 4 8 has a frequency of 3 and 1 has 9 has a frequency of 1. So as you can see, it looks like a curve. And this curve is actually what is known as the bell curve or the normal curve. Or sometimes other people call it the Gaussian bell. It is actually Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss a mathematician who formulated this distribution. So for question number two, it says, what is the shape of the graph? Well, the shape of the graph is bell-shaped. And that is why it is called the bell curve. Number three, compute the three measures of averages of distribution, which is also known as the central tendency. So we have to compute for the mean, median, and the mode. To compute for the mean, we have to get the summation of this, of the scores. So 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 and plus 1. The summation is 45 and we have to divide that by 9, which is the number of entries that we have here. So 45 divided by 9 is equal to 5. For the mode, Mode is actually the most number of scores or data that shows up in our data set. So for this one, each score that we have is actually unique. So the mode is not applicable. To solve for the median, you have first to sort your scores into ascending order. And then you have to count how many scores you have. So in this case, we have nine. If the number of your scores is odd, just divide it by 2. 
9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Corda is equal to 5. So the fifth element or the fifth position in your data set is the median of this group. So let's say first position, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So your median is actually 5. But looking at the graph, it will give you a hint of the central tendency. As you can see, everything is in the center. Your mean, the median, and in some other cases, the mode, you can readily see them on the center of the graph. And that is one of the characteristics of normal distribution. That is why the bulge of the graph is in the center, because the scores tend to concentrate near the mean or the average. Just a little bit of a side note, if for example, the number of your items in a data set is not odd, but rather even, then this is how you find for the median. Let's say I have a set of 8, 1, 3, 5, 22, 17, 12, and 12. So you have to first sort them into ascending order. So that is 1, 3, 5, 8, 12, 12, 17, and 22. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 items. Next, you have to add the middle, the two middle elements of the scores. In this case, we have the fourth and the fifth element. So median will now be equal to 8 plus 12 divided by 2. Well, in this case, your median is 10. That is how you solve for the median for even-numbered data sets. Going back to your module, so as you can see, the answer for the number 4 question is that we found mean, median, and mode in the center of the graph. So based on this activity, what generalizations can you make? Normal distribution has a bell-shaped curve. The central tendency, mean, median, and mode are usually found in the center, and that the scores tend to divulge in the center part of the graph. That's why it looks like a bell. So now, looking at the module, normal distribution, this is what it looks like. This is better than the one I graphed, actually. <laughs> the given distribution consists of a large number of cases, and the three measures of averages, mean, median, and mode, are equal, and the distribution is symmetrical, and the skewness is zero. So symmetrical siya sa gitna na part. Ibig sabihin ng symmetrical, kung ano ang meron sa left, meron din sa right. Okay? So from the sketch of the graph you did in the activity, the following properties of the normal probability distribution emerge. So these are the properties of a normal probability distribution. First, we already saw that it is indeed bell-shaped. Number two, the curve is symmetrical about its center. The mean, the median, and the mode are equal and coincide at the center. Three, the width of the curve is determined by the standard deviation of the distribution, which is later on we will find out that the standard deviation is actually 1. Number 4, the tails of the curve flatten out indefinitely along the horizontal axis, always approaching the axis but never touching it, meaning, if you can still remember in general mathematics, that is the curve is asymptotic to the baseline. Almost touching but never really intercepting. So number 5, the area under the curve is 1. Exactly half of the values are to the left of the center, and exactly half the values are to the right. So, if you're going to think about it, if you're going to measure the area on the right side only, how are you going to get the area? So, area is going to be 1 over 2, which is 0.5. Okay? So, this is the equation that describes the normal curve. So, this is the equation where y is the height of the graph. And then the E, we know E, this is 2.7183 something something. And then pi, we also know, 3.1416 something something. And then we have x, 
this is a score, a specific score in your data set. And then we have mu, this is the mean. And you have sigma, that is the variance. By the way, as you can see, this equation is pertaining to population because of the symbol that was being used. Okay? So anyway, that is the equation for the height of the graph of a normal distribution. However, hindi na natin ito masyadong pag-uusapan because ang gusto natin malaman actually and what's important for us is the z value or later on z score. We will talk we'll be talking about the z score. Why is it important for us anyway? Because the z value it says or it pertains to how far from the mean a data point is. The z-value will let us compare results to a normal population. So, the meaning nun, guys, is that if you have the z-value, you will be able to know easily how far from the mean is a data point. So, it is easy for you to generalize or to make conclusions. This type of distribution or this test is actually quite often used in research, in generalizing data sets and interpreting data results. That's why researchers can form or draw a conclusion. The standard normal distribution. So, a normal distribution is determined by the mean and the standard deviation. If the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, the normal distribution is called a standard normal distribution. By substituting the mean and the standard deviation in the formula, mathematicians are able to find the areas under the normal curve. The areas under the normal curve can be found using the areas under the standard normal distribution table. These areas have already been predetermined for use. In your modules, you can see here the table of areas under the normal curve. Now, this is predetermined already, the values, and each point, no? each possible point under the normal curve, na determine nila ang area under that one. So, hindi natin kailangang isolve. We are just going to use the table of areas under the normal curve. And this is the depiction of the areas under the normal curve. As we have said before, ang mean natin ay 0, yung nasa gitna, at ang standard deviation natin is 1. But not exactly 1. Because remember, this, this line right here is uh, only in this picture. It looks like it's touching the baseline. But again, remember, one of the characteristics of the normal distribution is that this line does not touch the baseline. It is asymptotic. That is why hindi fully number one. Hindi fully one ang standard deviation. It is only estimated up to 0 0.9974. Okay? And then, we have here from z is equals to negative one to z is equals to one. That is 0 0.6826. That is the area. Okay? But if it is z from negative 2 up until positive 2, the area is 0 0.9544. Okay? So if, you, if, for example, you are going to be asked, what is the uh, area from negative 1 to 0, then you can just divide 0 0.6826 by 2. And that is actually 0 0.3413. Okay? So that is how you are going to get the different areas under the curve. However, not all the time, whole numbers ang pinag-uusapan natin. Tama man? There are times that it could be negative 2.5, negative 1.86, negative 3.55, or maybe 2.81. Uh, so it's different. So later on, we are going to get, or we are going to solve the areas under the normal curve using the table. Let's first say some information about the table. The given table provides the area between z is equal to 0 and any value of z. So, it might be going positive z-score or going to the left, which are the negative values for z-scores. Note that the row entries are the z-values. Okay. In this part, in the table, these are the row entries. Okay. At ito yung ating column entries. So, sabi niya, the row entries are the z values. The row headings, uh, so on and so on, they indicate the whole number in the tenth place of a z value. 
The column headings naman ang 100, place of a Z value. The entries in the body of the table give the area or probability between 0 to Z. By the symmetry of the normal distribution, the area between Z is equal to 0 and any point to the left is equal to the area between Z is equal to 0 and the point equidistant to the right. So, so for example, if you have here something like this, for example, we have a z-score of negative 1.5. And then you look up, you know, you want to know the area under the curve of negative 1.5. But then looking at the table, looking at the table, there is really no negative values here. But you do realize that the area for negative 1.5 is the same as positive 1.5, right? So meaning, if you have this, or if you know this, you also know this. So going back here, so 1.5. So ito yun siya, no? 1.5. And then, since wala siyang kasunod, wala siyang 100 place, it's only 0. So ito na yung sabot niya. 0 0.4332. So that is the area under the normal cur curve for z is equals to negative 1.5. That is 0 0.4332. Okay? So that is how you get the area under the normal curve when the given z value is negative. Okay? So this is how you find the areas under the normal curve given a z value. You can read that one, but it will be easier if gawin na lang natin siya para mas madali with different examples. Okay? Okay, so we have different examples here and we try to find the area under the normal curve. So number one, if you have z is equals to 1.28, first you have to look it up on the table. So the tenth part is 1.2. And then the hundred part is 8.08. So, ito siya, no? This one, 0 0.3997. So, the area is 0 0.3997. How about Z is equal to negative 2.81? So, again, the tenth one is 2.8 and the hundred is 0 0.01. So, the area is equal to, let's go back to the table, 2.8 here and then 0 0.01, so this one. 0 0.4975 0 0.4975 and then the last one is negative 0 0.76 that is the value of your z so the tenth part of the score is 0 0.7 and then the hundred part is 0 0.06 so this one and then this one right 0 0.2764 So that is how you get the area of the normal curve. In your modules, there are actually some examples and the solutions are shown. And also, there are independent practice. So you can practice on your own. And I hope that you will really practice. Because later on, you will be using this one and you are expected to be quite expert na, no? Pagdating natin doon sa part na yun. So, moving on to number 2 or lesson number 2, which is identifying the areas under the normal curve. Okay. So, study the curve and identify the shaded region in terms of Z values. So, obviously, the Z value is 1, right? Can you think of another region with the same area? So, based on your knowledge earlier about the properties of the normal distribution, you will know that from 0 to positive 1, it has the same area as 0 to negative 1 because of the symmetry. So regions under the curve can be described in terms of area. Area between two specific z values can be determined using the z table and the suggested steps below. There are times kasi guys that kailangan natin hanapin or there are times that we have two z values. No? Depende kasi. Depende sa kung ano yung hinahanap natin. Some studies, um, quantitative research, pero qualitative kasi kayo ngayon, no? but still the same. 
research studies have variables. Ang mga research studies, meron silang variables. Let's say, for example, I am studying about um, um, academic performance. Okay? Acad academic performance of uh, senior high school students um, amidst pandemic. Okay. Or, or not pandemic, kasi masyadong malawak. Uh, let's say... Um, academic performance of senior high school student um, who have online learn who are who are dapat who are using or utilizing online learning for example so this is a variable the academic performance bakit kaya yan siya naging variable kasi ang magre-represent sa academic performance ay grades. Diba? So, pag meron kang grades, you will have numbers. So, if you have numbers, then you have a data. Tama man? Okay, so that is one variable. How about online learning? What represents online learning? It depends. Depende sa researcher. It could be hours in a uh, virtual class. It could be number of activities it could be in number of modules online it, it it can be anything so as you can see again these are numbers okay numbers scores or or data okay so lahat ito I ibig sabihin magagamit ito siya for statistics and what i'm saying is sometimes itong grades meron siyang z value at itong online learning, the representation of online learning, meron din siyang sarili niyang z-value. Therefore, there are times that you have two z-values and you want to know which part or asang area sila under the normal curve. So, how are you going to get that? Okay? So, let's go back to your modules because the module will show you how you're going to get that. You can read this one, no? Um... But again, sometimes kasi, uh, mas maganda kung gawin na lang natin. So, let's go ahead and just do it. So, we have different cases. We actually have, I think, five cases. So, the case one is from Z to any Z value. Sorry, from Z is equals to zero to any Z value. Okay, so, there could be two possibilities for that. Tama man? It could be, sorry, ang ganda ng straight line ko. Okay. Okay. There is two possibilities for that one. So, Z is equals to zero to any value, to any Z value. It could be a positive value or it could be a negative value. Okay. So, from here, this is zero. From here, this is zero. So, it could be anywhere here or anywhere going to the left. It might be going to the right, might be going to the left. Pero, whatever it is, you can find the area by doing this example. Find the area, for example, lang, ha? find the area that corresponds to Z is equals to negative 1. So, and dito ang negative 1, right? So, let's just say, bam, this one. So, we are looking for this one. Okay? So, going back on page, um, what was that page? <laughs> Wait lang, ha? Let me go back up, 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 up. Okay, dear, this one. On page 5, you know, predetermined na nga, remember? So, hindi na tayo pahirap sa sarili natin. So, from 0 to negative 1, it is 0 0.3413. So, the area is 0 0.3413. Okay? So, another example, how about if, case 1 pa rin tayo, let's go to example 2. What if the z is equals to 1? So, ito naman siya na part, no? z is equals to 1, it's positive. What about this one? So, the same thing. Because of the symmetry, the area is still 0 0.3413. Thirteen. Okay, this is case 1. So, Z is equals to 0 from 0 to any Z value, whether it's positive or negative. It is the same um, steps or process. Okay, how about for number 2? Case number 2. And by the way, what is case number 2? <laughs> so, let's go. Case number 2 is when the required area is greater than Z. We don't exactly know what is the uh, 
the z value we we actually know the z value but we don't know up to what range no hindi natin alam z greater sorry sorry baliktad greater than z value okay so ibig sabihin lahat no lahat ng mas mataas sa given na z value for example if the z is 0.98 then therefore kunin mo yung value ng 0.98 and above Okay, yun yung ibig sabihin niya. But, in the module, it actually says something about the terminologies that can be used. Because sometimes, it can be at least Z, or more than Z, to the right of Z, or above Z. Those are the same. Okay, so for example, tulad ng nandito, nakikita nyo sana yung, ano, yung image. No? So, area under the normal cur curve, if the Z, or sorry, if the Z is equals to negative, so as you can see, it starts from that value, which is a negative Z, and then everything else to the right. For example, naman, positive na dati yung Z value. So from that value, anything again going to the right. Okay, so we have an example here. Find the area above Z is equals to negative 1.34. Okay, so. Pa natin siya dito. Okay. This is your zero. Ang ating ano, ah, sorry, sorry. This is negative 1. So, negative, what's the Z again? Negative 1.34. So, a little bit here, no? So, let's say this is negative 2, negative 3. So, a little bit here, uh, 1.3. Ganyan, kunari, this one. Okay, so, ang kailangan natin is this one. And this one. Tama man? Okay, greater man ka ha, diba? Greater than Z. So, we all know that earlier, sinabi na natin that the normal... Or, or the area under the normal curve is equals to 1. And we said that the area, kung dito lang sa right ang pinag-uusapan, it should be 1 over 2, tama man, which is 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.5. So, we know this area, no, sa negative 1.34. So, hanapin muna natin yung area doon sa z-table, no? z-table muna tayo, 1.34. So, 1.3, 1.3. At saka 0.04 So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 So ito uh, 0 0.4099 Okay So the area, itong ito, itong area na niya Is 0 0.4099 However, it is Ito lang yung nakuha natin eh Diba? Tama? Ito lang yun So kailangan pa natin siyang i-add dito sa 0.5 So the area now should be 0.4099 plus 0.5 which is let me use my calculator 0.5 plus 0.4099 it should be okay 0 0.9099 so kung imagine you good guys pag sinabi natin or nakakuha tayo ng greater than na ganitong value you can immediately say that 90.99% of the entire population is something like that Ganun siya nagagamit itong value na ito. No? Itong area under the curve. Ganun siya ginagamit usually in whatever, um, what do you call this one, type of research, experiment, or observation you are doing. Okay, so let's go back to your module and let's see if we got the correct answer. That is case 2, example number 1, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so there you go. So you're above or, or the area above Z above z is equals to negative 1.34 is 0 0.9099 guys meron siyang above ha it doesn't say that uh hindi lang siya z is equals to negative 34 but it says above so ibig sabihin from that value going on to the right okay another example how about positive na siya dati 1.56 so andito siya no therefore kung pupunta tayo sa z table again I hope you would be able to master this now, no? So, 1.5, hanapin ninyo sa uh, row, 1.5, and then sa column, 0 0.06, you shall get 0 0.4406, okay? So, looking here, or, or kung gagawin ko siya dito sa graph, para makita natin, no? Okay. We all know that this is 0 0.5 already. At ang 1.56 ay, for example, nandito, no? Ang 1.56 sobra sa 1.5, okay? There you go. So, ang, ang kailangan kasi natin, ito eh, di ba? 1.56 onwards, 
So, ito yung kailangan natin. Tapos, alam natin na yung area ng 1.56 is, what was that? 44, 0.4406. So, how are we going to get this, just this one, the area of that? So, that should be area is equals to 0.5 minus 0.4406. Okay? So, Using the calculator again, 0.5 minus 0.4406, your answer should be, or the area should be 0.0594. Let's see again if we are correct. Ooh, okay, guys, <laughs> this is a typographical error. It should not be 0.4406. It's obvious from the this one, oh, dito sa taas, sinolv niya na nga eh. It should be 0.0. 594. Again, guys, that is a typographical error. It should be 0.0594. Okay. Next, case number 3. Kung less than naman, it's the same. No? Kung less than, it just goes the other way around. So, ibig sabihin, pag negative na yung z value, okay, there you go, if you have a negative z value, so, here on, going to the left. Tama man? But if we have a positive Z value, sorry, grabe-grabe na talaga yung Gaussian bell ko. Parang hindi na siya Gaussian bell. Ano ba naman to? Okay, sorry naman. Okay. So, if you have a positive Z value, then therefore, all of this, no? from that positive value, going to the left. So, meron tayong mga example dito. Let's say, um, example number 1, negative 1.52. Okay, I hope you will try this one on uh, with yourself, no? uh, on your own, I should say. So, ito lang yung kukunin ninyo. So, the same logic, no? Alam na natin na 0.5 yung left side. So, ibig sabihin, pag ito lang yung kailangan mo, yung nakuha mong area from the Z table, just minus that one or just deduct that one from 0.5. You shall get 0.0643 as <coughs> the area, no? The same goes with the positive one. Pero itong positive, medyo, ano siya, no? Medyo kailangan pa ng a different type of logic. So, kunin mo muna yung yung area, and i-add mo siya sa 0.5. Okay, it goes the other way around. Okay? Madali lang naman siya intindihin, guys. I hope you will be able to um, analyze this on your own. Okay, so, when the required area is between two Z values with the same signs. Okay? The same signs, guys. So, that is two possibilities pa rin, no? It could be negative-negative. It could be positive positive so kung nag positive 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 siya ayan ito yung z1 ito yung z2 tama man and kung negative negative siya andito siya sa negative side the left side so this is your negative z1 and negative z2 okay sorry ang letter z ko nagmumukhang 2 okay okay so these are the two possible cases for case 4 between two z values of the same sign. So, how are you going to get the values? So, let's say, mag-example tayo. Positive muna, no? So, this is, for example, lang uh, 0.82 at saka, ano yun? 1.70. Okay. So, ano muna yung area? Okay. Remember, this is zero. I will use a different, ano? Parang kanina pa ako nag-red. Ayan, so this is your zero. No, and this is your zero, kunwari. So, I just want to get this. This one. So, between 0.82 at saka 1.70. So, kunin muna natin, no? Kunin natin yung area. So, nakakapagod kasi huwag punta-punta doon sa Z-table, guys. So, kunin ko na lang dito, no? So, ang area pag 1.70 is 4554. Point, sorry. And then, sa... 0.82 naman is 0.2939. Okay. So, how are we going to get this? <laughs> okay, there you go. As you can see, kung tingnan natin dito ha, sa ano, sa tawag dito sa kanyang illustration. So, kung itong part lang, ang gusto natin kunin, ang 1.70 kasi, from, remember guys, yung nakukuha natin sa Z-table is from 0 to that number. So, ibig sabihin, itong 0 0.4554, this is from 0 to 0 0.4554 or 1.70. Ibig sabihin, ang nakuha niyan is this, all of this. Yan, yan lahat. Okay? Yan, yan siya. 
at ang 0.2939 naman is from 0, let me use a different color naman, from 0 to 0.82. Ibig sabihin, ito siya. Okay? So, paano natin makuha ito na side? Therefore, we have to deduct 0.4554 minus 0.2939. Okay? So, the area should be let me use my calculator. 0.455. Ay, anong nangyari? 0.4554 minus 0.2939. Okay. It is 0 0.1615. It is indeed 0 0.1615. Okay. So, baka sabihin natin no, na nagabase lang tayo dito sa module. Let me try to solve this one. But, I will be using my own, or kasi nag-print din ako nitong Z-table, no? So, I hope you practice on your own and try to use the Z-table as much as possible. So, let's try negative 2 to negative 1. So, dito na tayo. This is negative 2 and then this is negative 1. So, kung kukunin ko yung 2, yung area ng 2, it should be 2.0. Tama man? So, the area I'm using again a printed Z table, so the area should be for sorry, point four seven seven two. Ang negative one naman is one point zero, so that is zero point three four one three. Okay. So again, remember, etong eto etong four point sorry, ito pong point four seven seven two is from zero. Let me use a different one. From zero to Z one. So, ito yan siya lahat, no? Tapos, itong 3 point, sorry, point 0.3413, this is from, let's use a different number again, a color, yan siya. Ito yan siya, tama man. So, ito lang yung gusto mong kunin, eh, itong green. Ito lang, ba? Ito lang yung gusto natin kunin. So, paano natin siya makukuha? So, we have to minus these things. Ito na, ito na, point 4772 minus 0.3413. And the answer would be, let me use again my calculator, point, 0.4772 minus 0.3413. Okay. And that is 0 0.1359. Okay. Let's see if it's correct. Minsan kasi, ayun. Okay, so, 1359. So, the last case, when the Z required is, um, yung negative yung isa at positive yung isa. So, kung ganun guys, ito, maglalogic na talaga kayo, no? Kailangan nyo na ng konting logic siya. Okay, so, this example is a bit easy. Kasi nga, um, ito lang, i-add mo lang tong area na to plus yung area nung kabila. That, that is quite easy. I hope you understand the, the example number 9. Okay, and I hope you do this practice as well. Kasi nga, um, it's quite, not exactly easy, but it will help you. It will help you better kung kayo mismo yung mag-solve on your own. Okay? So, from lesson 3 to lesson 5, I will upload a video lesson for this one. Kasi nga, 11.30 something na, no? So, I will stop right now and I will uh, make a video lesson later, inshallah. So, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you watch this video. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shalala ilaha ila anta astaghfiru kabatubu alaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.